Finally, here they are, the 2015 Dietary Guidelines for Americans. All right, so the 2015 Dietary Guidelines for Americans are finally out, and I've been waiting for these for a long time now, and like all guidelines that come out, there are pros, there are cons to it. So I just wanna share my thoughts on the guidelines from a first glance. So I thought a big pro of these guidelines was their recommendation for cholesterol. Eat as little cholesterol as possible. Well, that kind of sounds like what I do. I eat a 100% plant-based diet with no animal products, which in fact, animal products are the only source of cholesterol. So my thoughts, my initial thoughts from reading that statement was, you know, why aren't they just recommending a vegan diet? That's as little cholesterol as possible, isn't it? I think that it may cause some confusion when people hear cholesterol or even words like saturated fat. They're usually synonymous with animal products. And so eating as little cholesterol as possible, the consumer is not going to really know what that means. So, I, you know, why not clear up the confusion? Just recommend a plant-based diet. However, the committee do deserve credit for recommending a healthy vegetarian pattern, which says that a vegan diet actually scored higher in calcium and fiber than a regular standard American diet. Yeah, so this whole deal with cholesterol is baloney, uh, pun intended, because the committee was actually about to drop this whole thing about eating less cholesterol. So the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, they actually got furious as they should. So they had petitions going on, they gave oral testimony and even threatened to sue them for not speaking out about this. They actually had sufficient evidence from the Freedom of Information Act that industry, such as the American Egg Board, had a big influence on the committee's decision for their cholesterol recommendations. Who would have thought? So here are just a few words from Dr. Michael Greger of nutritionfacts.org and Dr. Neil Barnard himself, president of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, that they gave some oral testimony about why they think the committee should recommend less cholesterol. One matter that I'd like to see reassessed in terms of the totality of evidence is the dietary cholesterol. You heard about the Institute of Medicine report uh, they conclude that people should maintain their dietary cholesterol intake as low as possible, unquote. Uh, tolerable upper intake was not set for cholesterol because, quote, any incremental increase in cholesterol intake increases coronary heart disease risk, unquote. Our number one killer saying, essentially, the only safe intake is zero. You know, many of those studies were done on fasting cholesterol levels, which are appropriate for drug trials, see what the liver is doing, but may underestimate dietary effects. I mean, the reason physicians do lipid levels in the morning, because we know after the bacon and eggs, the fat and cholesterol in the bloodstream is going to go up. And um, so that's where we live most of our lives, right, in a fed state. So I'd encourage um, looking into the literature on the postprandial, post-meal effects of dietary cholesterol as well as well as looking at the non-cardiovascular effects of dietary cholesterol. A recent study found high dietary cholesterol intake associated with risk of stomach cancer, colon cancer, rectal cancer, pancreatic cancer, lung cancer, breast cancer, kidney cancer, bladder cancer, and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. In fact, this month, a new meta-analysis on dietary cholesterol and pancreatic cancer, same thing. By the committee guidelines suggesting that we should remove cholesterol as a nutrient of concern, it could be misconstrued as giving a green light to the consumption of foods that really should otherwise be minimized in lieu of healthier food choices. The committee caused considerable confusion in stating that dietary cholesterol is not a nutrient of concern. Most members of the public don't differentiate dietary cholesterol from blood cholesterol or the effects of dietary cholesterol from the risks of the foods that contain it. And the result has been a green light for unhealthful foods. In finalizing the guidelines, it's prudent to retain the dietary cholesterol limit established in the previous guidelines. So how did this confusion start? The committee wrote that there was, quote, no appreciable relationship between consumption of dietary cholesterol and serum cholesterol, consistent with the conclusions of the AHA ACC report, end quote. The committee was citing a report by the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology. However, 
The, Amer the AHA ACC report never said any such thing. It was summarizing evidence published after 1998, and the most recent meta-analyses on this subject were published in 1992 and 1997. The AHA ACC report simply called for more research and never said that there was no relationship between dietary cholesterol and serum cholesterol. In other words, it does not support the committee's statement, and neither do reports from the Institute of Medicine or the Food and Drug Administration, which wrote in 2014 of the well-established relationship between consumption of cholesterol and the effects on blood cholesterol levels. The relationship between cholesterol in foods and cholesterol in the blood was clearly established decades ago and is supported by a robust body of evidence recently summarized by the Institute of Medicine. And using the IOM's figures, the addition of about 100 milligrams of cholesterol, which is a, a half an egg, to the daily diet would boost LDL by about two points. That means that the cholesterol in a two-egg breakfast as part of one's daily routine might be expected to boost LDL by about eight points. Keep in mind that the guidelines are intended as a population-wide recommendation. And imagine what even a few extra cholesterol points would mean population-wide. And in addition, they apply to children. That's when cardiovascular disease starts. For all its good work, the committee made a scientific error on cholesterol. And to carry this mistake into the guidelines is not scientifically defensible and serves only to perpetuate confusion. So I still can't believe that in this day and age, we are still debating over cholesterol, where our number one killer is heart disease. Another thing I had against the recommendations really was they said nothing about red and processed meat intake. The World Health Organization just a few months ago came out with a full report analyzing all these studies on why red and processed meats are now considered carcinogens. In fact, processed meat is right in the same category as cigarettes and asbestos. I really wish that the committee would have taken that World Health Organization document into consideration. The good news is the benefits of a plant-based diet are coming out each and every day. Certainly this wasn't what we were anticipating, but these are definitely steps forward. Even if they're baby steps, they're heading towards the right direction and that's what we want. We want people to realize that you have to start eating less meat, less animal products, and more whole plant-based foods. Foods like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, that's what the committee is saying, in fact. I just wish that it wasn't worded in a confusing way so that the population, the public, can know what a healthy way of eating is. So there you go. Those were my thoughts on the new 2015 guidelines. And I just thought you guys should be aware of these documents. That way, if someone does question you, you know, without a, whether a vegan diet is healthy or not, the vegan diet is still considered to be one of the healthiest diets according to the advisory committee. What are your thoughts on the new guidelines? What do you guys like about them? What don't you guys like about them? Share your thoughts in the comment section down below. Give this video a like if you found it useful and subscribe for more videos on the vegan lifestyle. And we'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.